customizing it and making it unique to your layout. It's really made a lot of difference. Hi there everyone, I do hope that you're well in this enforced lockdown and quarantine and of course it's a time where we find ourselves with a lot of time on our hands and maybe not so much to do with it. So I thought that I'd share with you today a video uh, basically giving you a how-to guide to another type of uh, weathering on a wagon. We did the Acura Scale double O gauge HUO hoppers and as you can see there just over my shoulder we've got ready the O gauge version that I reviewed a little while ago on this channel. It's the Rolls Royce of O gauge wagons definitely so and one of the things I think that will really bring it even more to life is some weathering. And I want to try a slightly different technique from what I did before, so come with me in association with channel sponsors, Train O Matic, uh, designers and makers of DCC decoders and other accessories designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. And of course, a big thank you to Acura Scale, who originally provided this wagon for review. So uh, I'm going to now do a full on weathering job on it. I'm going to guide you through the entire process. So come with me. It'll be great to have your company. I'm really looking forward to having you join me as we go on a voyage of discovery with how to weather wagons. <laughs> This is the wagon in question, the Acura Scale HUO O gauge wagon I've chosen to do. And as you can see, it's a really great model, but presented X Works, well, I don't remember seeing many of these, if any at all, ever in it's such a clean and nice condition. They presumably left the works looking like this, but very quickly got dirty, deteriorated, started to rust. Uh, such was the hard life that wagons such as these lived. So what I want to do is to turn this from this pristine version into uh, a wagon that's got a patina of rust and a little bit of dirt as well. So I think the inside, no way would it still have a trace of paint in there after a good few uses. The coal would very quickly just chip all that away. And if the wagon then uh, uh, stood out in the rain for any length of time, the bare metal would uh, gather a very quick surface coating of rust. On the outside the uh, paintwork would probably be a bit more resilient but still it wasn't uncommon to see a patina of rust breaking through and I want to try and create a little bit of that effect. What I really want to do is to do this fairly simply with things that the average model is likely to have hanging about. So what I tend to use for weathering are the Humbrol Rust Wash and the Black Wash. So I've got both here, well used. I used these on the double O gauge weathering video and they're really good actually. They're kind of just like gone off paint in suspension is the best way to describe them. And what I tend to do is sometimes as these get a little bit uh, chunky near the bottom, it's quite easy to syringe in a little bit of white spirit just to thin them down a little bit. But we're good to go with these. I'm going to put them there. And then brush wise, I'm going to have uh, quite a big wide fat brush. Uh, this one actually came from the range. Uh, pretty good, pretty cheap brush. And that's going to be for the initial application. We get good coverage, get into all the nooks and crannies. And then later on, I want to use this fairly short, fairly stiff bristled brush. And I see it a good deal smaller because I'm going to be using this to stipple back through the rust effect. So um, first up, we just basically baste the wagon in this, get a good wash over everything, and then we leave it to dry. And actually leave it until it's completely dry. Uh, leave it be, don't try and go for a second pass or anything. And then when that's kind of semi-set, we go in with the black very sparingly and just try and break back through the layer of the wash in a pattern. So it looks like where we break through, it looks like actually that's where the paint is still fine. And you get a much more speckled effect. Um, that's the plan. So first stage first, let's get on with the plain rust wash. And we're going to put that to one side 
and this brush we're going to put to one side. They come later in the process. So you're going to give it a little bit of a shake because these do tend to settle out a little bit. And then I'm going to start with the inside of this wagon. This brush just fits in and I can feel there's quite a lot of sludge at the bottom of this. Just stir it up a little bit. You can see a lot of the sludge there actually. We don't want too much um, otherwise it's very much like painting it rather than weathering it. Uh, what I will say is that whilst it looks like I'm just painting in here, this does tend to just kind of flow and sort out its own equilibrium. Uh, so don't worry too much at this stage about brush marks. This to me, because when we see a wagon on a model that's empty, we could tell ourselves it's been sat overnight in siding somewhere and very quickly any bare steel would uh, begin to rust. So actually I've got a little bit more than I want in there but I'll just use that as a, a kind of a, a reservoir to draw this rust wash from. And I'm going to try and get the brush strokes going vertical uh, just so it would simulate the pattern of wear from the coal grinding down through this wagon uh, when it's loaded, when it's unloaded through the bottom doors. Just uh, try and get all of that interior well rusted. And actually what I want to do with this is to leave the interior be. So this coat of the rust is this is just final as it were um, I'm not going to be adding black gunge to this or anything I just want this to be what you see when you look down and into this wagon get the vertical brush strokes if I can uh, again, vertical brush strokes and try not to get any obvious points where um, you can see where the brush is lifted from the surface. There's a little bit more around there. And then moving on around the top. Actually, a little bit much on there. But you don't have to be super neat, it has to be said. And the wagon is, it seems, starting to leak through the underside. I hadn't banked on that, but uh, it's okay. Uh, I can clean up afterwards. And then on the outside, again, vertical strokes. And it, it, at this stage, you start to think, oh my god, what am I doing? This is a brilliant model and I've made a hell of a mess. And actually, don't worry about it. As I always say, railway modelling is all about confidence and you've got to give yourself the confidence to say, it's alright, I get that sorted. Um, and this is part of the process. Not all of railway modelling looks perfect at every stage of the process. you just got to confidence in yourself. Now all of these gussets, we need to get the paint worked into these because you don't want any unexpectedly clean spots because they will look weird and believe me it's actually quite easy to accidentally miss some of these spots and you can see how it's actually as, as for paint it's, it's you know it's not paint it's weathering but it it doesn't cover in the same way that paint would and gravity will pull a lot of this down as long as you get the coverage of inside all of these these gussets then uh, that's fine just trying to hold it in a way that i don't get covered in paint when i do double o wagons i try and hold them buffer to buffer but an o gauge wagon's a bit bigger than what i'm used to let's get some of that off the so rather than waste it let's just uh and do this so that I can see what I'm doing and still keep it on camera. It's quite tricky, you know. Well, the filming side of it is the tricky side.
but uh, just concentrate at the moment, getting into all those gussets. Get the hopper side all the way down as well. You don't want any clean spots because it just doesn't look right. You wouldn't have a random squeaky clean spot. They just don't weather like that. And then just pin down into the missed a couple of those gussets, so I'll take this opportunity to get them. And these springy uh, end rails, they're quite resilient. We talked about that in the review, so don't worry too much, you're not going to break it. Easy to miss some of these gussets, just got to get right in there. And then the underframe as well, we'll get a patina of rust. Try and get right in there to the sides of the, the hoppers, sole bars, stretcher bars, sides of the hoppers. And let's see, can we hold it very carefully and do something I don't normally like to do, which is hold it by the buffers and get all of this underside, the steps, everything there. And actually, this brings to life the underside because it highlights things that you wouldn't normally just carefully press that there you wouldn't normally see the light and the shadow would work against you and I think that's complete so what I'm going to do now I'm going to get the lid back onto the weathering wash clean the brush leave it I'm going to leave that for several hours I want it to be dry such that you can handle this and it not just come off on your fingers uh, because for the next stage um, it's important that this has some degree of resilience to it so i'm going to go away leave that be and come back a few hours you can even leave it a couple of days if you really want to um, in some respects a little bit longer can prove better uh, but you can see there a lot of the brush strokes disappeared brilliant I've come back to the wagon after giving it some time to dry and you can notice the speckle effect on it as well. What I did with this was I got the brush, I dipped it in some of the spare weathering fluid that's pooled down in the bottom and then just dabbed it kind of in a, uh, a dab 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 effect like this over all the panels and then also left that to dry and that built up this extra layer of rust looking like you know sort of much more severe rust spots coming through. It might look a little bit weird at the moment, but that's because we've still got the next stage of this weathering to perform. The actual uh, weathering coating that's on there, you can see, is it's pretty much dry. I've had it underneath a, literally a heat lamp just to uh, help this to dry out. And I'm gonna tip this onto its side so that you can uh, uh, see this a little bit better as I do it. We're going to the other Humbrol wash here, the black wash, and I'm gonna shake that up, uh, try and get it well mixed, get inside the uh, actual bottle. And we don't want a lot of this. You don't want a saturated uh, brush, just enough that uh, you can just get a tissue and uh, just try and get the worst of that off and then when we come to the wagon what we're going to do is just try and very gently take little bits of the weathering off and this is kind of you know don't go too gung-ho and you don't want 
a lot of lines in one direction if you can help it. And you're trying to keep this brush really dry, just enough that you can kind of loosen and take off some of that pattern of weathering material. As you can see, the brush just needs to be almost dry. It does not need too much solvent. If you get too much solvent on here, the problem you will get is that it will just wash everything off. It will become another liquid mess. That's starting to struggle. So, in fact, what I will do is I'll take a tiny, tiny amount just from the rim. It's possibly a little bit much. Let's just see. Work in a kind of stippling motion. Move it along. Tiny, tiny amount more. And just work on different patterns. I just need a little bit more. Because this is black and grimy, any of that wash that goes on just helps to give changes in the colours. Working this in there, and it's just an old brush, reasonably stiff bristles, and you just don't want too much solvent. And what you see is where that extra layer of stippling went over, some of that is sticking through and giving us that alternative pattern. And I'm just going to clear up where the yellow triangle is, just clear that off a little bit so we can make sure that we enjoy some of the amazing detail of the tempo printing. And you get this kind of rust and flaked paint effect is what we're trying to do. Don't rush it. This is kind of where it all comes together. Try and break through some of that rust layer. Again, just so you can see what I'm doing, just trying to get ever so slight amount of solvent onto the brush. Ever so slight. Just to allow this work to break through that rust coat. And you get hopefully a similar effect to that tempo printing of the rust patterns that some of the manufacturers have really got quite good at doing. Now that rim of the, the jar is getting quite dry so I'm just going to move some stuff up out of the bottle, clean off the brush a little bit and then just go to work on the next next panel. And you can see here we've probably got a little bit too much because it's gone all smeary. It's just yeah, just a little bit too much on there. So let's see if we can use that to our advantage. Maybe the rust didn't really get going on this particular panel so <sighs> bring that back and there you have the first side coming together let's get some of that top just bring some of that rust wash off 
and I can see there as well needs a little bit more work doing there we are so that is quite a heavily rusted wagon now one of the other things you can do is just a little bit of that black wash onto the ribs don't rub it in too much doesn't need rubbing in Yeah, got a little bit too much on this panel, but we can use that to our advantage. Just want to get rid of that little bit of a ridge across there. Clean up that panel. Yeah, drier the better I find with the, this technique. I'm using an old brush because ain't going to be worth much when you're done. You're kind of almost forcing your way through. You don't want to dissolve your way through because that just makes a bit of a mess. You're kind of scrubbing your way through. That little ridge there. How do you know? I'm going to leave that. I like it. I've decided I like it. I'm going to get on now and do the ends. It's easier to do that when I'm not filming it because I've got to lift it up in the air. And then I'll show you the finished product. And here is the finished item. Done the ends. Got all of those uh, plates done. And you get this really nice, unique, heavily distressed, rusted paint still there, but rust and dirt. And you may be wondering why the inside, I haven't done anything on there. I just want to leave that as plain old rust. I think that works better. So there you have it. Quick, easy. And effective and that's a couple of hours work and it has really transformed what was already an amazing model to something really unique and eye-catching it just goes to show that you don't need an airbrush to do a really great weathering job just with two colored washes from Humbrol on this Acura scale O gauge wagon it's really made a lot of difference customizing it and making it unique to your layout and in these times of lockdown that's 30 minutes to an evening that you can spend just getting these wagons just how you like. Time flies by when you're doing something that you enjoy. And hopefully this has given you a few good ideas on what you can do to improve your own wagon fleet using this technique. Don't forget that you can check out Acura Scale at the link down below and buy yourself exactly the same wagon. And also we've got uh, some links to the double O scale versions as well. If you want to try out uh, for getting some of these on your layout in the smaller scale. It seems weird to say that, the smaller scale. But uh, certainly these are great O-Gage wagons. And also don't forget to check out today's channel sponsor, Trainomatic. And we've got some links for them down below too. Also, like this video, share it too. And also subscribe to the channel to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, take really good care of yourself. And I look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian Smith, and Brian and Dorothy Mudd. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.